Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our viewers around the globe for a new episode of Roundup. We have lots to cover in today's show, so let's get started with the headlines. Facebook, the owner of Instagram, has paused work on a version of the platform made exclusively for children aged between 10 to 12 years, as parents worry the platform may negatively impact teen mental health. Instagram has said they will address the concerns that were raised after research by the Wall Street Journal showed that the app may be causing an increase in anxiety relating to issues around body images amongst young girls. As of September 18th, the Arc de Triomphe, a famous landmark in Paris, was wrapped in recyclable silver and blue polypropylene fabric for a 16-day public display. The project, first imagined almost 60 years back by the late artist Christo and wife Jean-Claude, was completed by his team after they partnered up with the National Centre of Monuments. The Arc de Triomphe is a massive monument shaped like an arch, built right in the middle of Paris to honour French war soldiers. Earlier this week, NASA launched a new high-tech satellite into Earth's orbit to monitor and capture images of our planet and how it's changed over time. The Landsat 9 is the latest Earth-observing spacecraft, the first of which was launched in 1972. Conservationists will be releasing 1,000 critically endangered radiated tortoises back into the wild of Madagascar. The radiated tortoise, named after the yellow lines on its shell, can only be found on the island of Madagascar. Since 2000, the illegal smuggling of radiated tortoises has caused them to drop in numbers from 12 million all the way down to 3 million. You know what, Jenna? It's amazing that I even made it here today. I wasn't sure I'd have enough petrol to get here. Yes, I know. I've heard some people had to wait two hours for just to get petrol. It's, it's not great. And you know what? We need to get to the bottom of this. And maybe Kashif can tell us what's going on with the petrol queues here in the UK. Okay, so right now we are looking around to find a petrol station, but you know, it's taking a really long time. It's taking, you know, 10, 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes. Uh, due to the petrol shortage we have around these areas, and most of the petrol stations we have came across are empty. They have no more fuel inside them. You may have heard about long queues forming at petrol stations across the UK in recent days as people panic by fuel. Even though the government and oil companies say that there is no shortage, we look at what's been happening and why. Oil companies including Shell, ExxonMobil and Green Energy have stressed that there is no petrol shortage and are saying that the pressures on supply were being caused by temporary spikes in customer demand, not a national shortage of fuel. I can't believe it. It's crazy. It's, but it doesn't seem like this. They keep saying there's no shortage. But it's just kind of, you know, everyone's, I suppose, everyone's panicking now. It was very hard. Early in the morning, I just got up and tried to go as the fuel station empty. Yeah. Then two others empty. This is the fourth one. And I have no fuel. I'm, ne I'm nearly going to go east of them. So I, I don't know how to make it. What is the reason for the panic buying? There is estimated to be a shortage of more than 100,000 drivers in the UK and it has been causing problems for a range of industries from supermarkets to fast food chains in recent months. After Brexit, many European drivers went back to their home countries or decided to work elsewhere due to the additional border bureaucracy and the impact it had on their income. The COVID-19 pandemic saw a few drivers return home, with a few returning back. So we should always remember to never, ever, ever be selfish. We should share with others what we have so that you will never see the sign in any other petrol station you know. Let's hope things get back to normal soon, so we don't have to worry about running out of petrol. Well, it's a good thing we have MTA to bring us all that we need to know in the comfort of our own homes, including the Friday Sermon. So here's your weekly Friday Sermon summary. Asalaamu Alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. 
As you know, our beloved Hazur Ayyad al bin Nasr Aziz has been delivering his Friday sermons regarding the companions of the Holy Prophet Last Friday, Hazur continued to speak about Hazrat Umar anhu, the second Khalifa of Islam, and particularly about the victories in Egypt. Before we get into what was said in the khutbah, did you know that Hazrat Umar accepted Islam after reciting the verses of Surah Taha? In the sermon, Hazur Ayyad al Adala bin Nasr Aziz mentioned some incidents relating to Hazrat Umar, particularly those regarding the victories in Egypt. We can't cover them all in this segment, but here's a couple. Initially quoting Hazrat Muslim al Razil al Anhu, Hazur stated that once there was a shortage of Muslim men in the army, Hazrat Abu Ubaidah Razil al Anhu wrote to Hazrat Umar for more soldiers. However, Hazrat Umar anhu, did not know of any tribe from where more men could be sent. Later, Hazrat Umar held a council and he was made aware of a tribe from where soldiers could be sent. Hazrat Umar sent a letter to Hazrat Abu Ubaidah stating that he was sending him 6,000 soldiers, 3,000, and a person named Amr bin Mahdi Qareb, who was equivalent to 3,000 people. Then, Hazur Anwar Ayd al Tala bin Nasr Aziz mentioned the victories in Egypt. These wars were led by Hazrat Amr bin Al-As He conquered Farhama, Tripoli and Alexandria. During these battles, the daughter of Makakus, the king of Egypt, was brought as a captive. However, she was returned to her people as she was the daughter of Makakus, who had sent gifts to the Holy Prophet According to the instruction of Hazrat Umar the people of Egypt were offered to accept Islam or to pay jizya tax. Some accepted Islam while others remained Christian. Hazur Abdus also highlighted one of the allegations that is raised against Hazrat Umar concerning the victories of Egypt. Hazur Ayyad al-Dala bin Hassel Aziz mentioned that some historians falsely allege that Hazrat Umar instructed the Library of Alexandria to be burned and that this fire continued for six months. Therefore, Muslims are against acquiring knowledge. Hazrat Anwar explained that acquiring knowledge was made incumbent upon every Muslim by the Holy Prophet Furthermore, Hazrat stated that many historians proved that these allegations were completely wrong and were entirely against the history of that era. These were just a few incidents from the sermon. To hear more inspiring incidents, please make sure you watch the Friday sermon with your family. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. Jazakallah for the summary, and as always, we encourage you to watch the whole Friday sermon, which is available online. For our next report, we head over to the land down under. We're heading to Australia to get an insight into one of its most famous animals, the koala. Australia is a country renowned for its intriguing wildlife. Whether it be its flora or its fauna, Australia has always had a fascinating ecosphere. One such example of this can be found in the koala. Often mistaken to be close relatives of bears, koalas are marsupials, which makes them more closely related to other Australian mammals, such as kangaroos, wallabies and possums. But where exactly can koalas be found? We're here at the Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary in Brisbane today with an expert who will answer these questions for us. So hi, my name's Maddie. I'm one of the keepers here at Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary. Yeah, so while koalas are internationally recognised as a symbol of Australia, they are actually only found on the southeastern and eastern parts of the country. So this is Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. Do koalas have any natural predators? So they do have a few natural predators, so these range from large birds of prey, goannas, dingoes and large snakes. However, because of the koala's arboreal nature and the fact of their size, they only really pose a threat to young joeys or back young. However, the biggest threat to koalas today is actually people and domestic dogs. So people, because we are causing a lot of habitat loss through land clearing and deforestation, and because of that, koalas are now spending a lot more time on the ground looking for food sources, looking for new homes, or looking for a potential breeding partner. And it's because of this, they're now at a greater risk of being hit by cars or being attacked by off-leash dogs. Could you please tell us some interesting facts about koalas? 
Yeah, absolutely. So koalas are really, really interesting animals. So to start off with, koalas are really fussy eaters. They only eat eucalyptus leaves. So of the over 700 species of leaf found in Australia, koalas will eat about 30 of them. Now it's because of this very restricted diet that koalas actually sleep up to 18 to 20 hours a day. This is because eucalyptus leaves have very low nutritional value and are actually made up of mostly water. So in order to overcompensate for this, koalas require a lot more sleep to conserve energy. That's a lot of sleep. Are there any other Australian animals that sleep as much as the koala? There are none that sleep as much, but coming in a close second would be wombats who sleep up to 16 hours a day, but koalas definitely do sleep the most. How has the current climate crisis affected koalas' living conditions? Um, it definitely has negatively impacted them. So we have seen an increase of natural disasters from bushfires, floods to droughts. So this really does affect both their food supply, their habitats and their general well-being. Um, so you can even look at the bushfires from a year or two ago and the devastating impacts that they had on the population and on their habitats. At the end of the day, koalas are one of the most recognised mammals in Australia. Their distinct looks and behaviours make them animals we should truly cherish and appreciate. What a great report from Yasser. It's amazing that koalas can sleep for nearly 18 hours a day. I mean, I wish I could get half of that sometimes. Enough about your sleeping hours, Jangi. It's now time to find out what our viewers are thinking about news and features we are bringing to you today. Given the current circumstances where we have shortage of food supplies and fuel, when going out for shopping, we should be very mindful for other people's needs. Try to make a list of the most necessary and essential items you need in the house. As you know, we have a very difficult time with food and petrol. We should try our best to only take the things we need. As Ahmadis, we have the responsibility to take care of the people all around us. Remember to keep an eye out on our social media at RoundupMTA on Twitter and Instagram for a preview of our topics, so you can have a chance to be featured. This week, we've got two around the worlds to bring to you. First, we go to Canada, where the Jamad in Calgary recently held a Tabligh Day. Let's find out from another Kashif on how it went. Here today in Calgary, it is Tabligh Day. Today we will be holding signs and handing out pamphlets. Embodies have been sent to their designated areas to do Tabligh. The purpose of Tabligh is to spread the message of Islam in Medir and to fulfill the prophecy of the promised Messiah salam, that I shall cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth. Today, we distributed flyers and held up signs and posters that said, Messiah has come. Today, the responses have been great. A little bit of them had problems, but majority was great. After doing Tabligh for a while, I took a break and enjoyed a chocolate milkshake. Many people came by and saw our signs or took flyers and some people stopped and asked questions. As you can see, it is raining. The message I would like to share with kids that are my age is that Tabligh is a fun thing to do and Tabligh is enjoyable. And that Tabligh grants you lots of blessings. Later in the afternoon, a virtual program was held on the topic of Find God, Find Peace. Ahmadis and Tabli guests watched this program from their homes. Kashif Raza Khan, MTA Canada. Jazakta for the report, Kashif. You definitely deserve their milkshake. Now, as you may know, Hazur Akdas, may Allah be his helper, graciously addressed the Lajnas and Nasrats at the UK Shtmal last weekend. So, we're going to finish today with an exclusive behind the scenes from the Ishtama, bringing you all the excitement as attendees gathered for the first time in two years. Assalamu alaikum. We're here at the Lajna Nasra UK National Ishtama here at Betel Fatul Mosque. This is the first time in 18 months that Nasra have been able to attend a Jamaat event as we weren't allowed to attend Jalsa Salana last year. We are so excited to see all our friends. Due to COVID, everyone is required to wear a mask and take a lateral flow test before arrival. Then everyone's temperature is checked before they enter the mosque. So let's see what's happening. 
This year, the National Art took part in a number of competitions, including speeches, talavat and nazim. Nasrat of all ages participated in these competitions in order to increase their spiritual development. They also took part in some sports and activities, such as kickboxing sessions for the Nasrat and Tai Chi for the Lajna. As well as this, there was an exhibition held by AMRA. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Research Association had some fascinating learning-based activities for Lajna and Nasrat. Just like Muhammad وسلم, brought us from spiritual darkness towards light, so to, during this exhibition what we're trying to do is to focus on uh, discoveries within science um, which have changed our understanding of how we see the world. We also have a station for Nasrat, which is basically lots of different fun activities for Nasrat, where they're going to be doing, making different models and structures using different materials, and then they're also going to be uh, doing some group building activities, they're going to be doing some structure building, lots of different fun activities. And then we also have this uh, dome, which is a planetarium dome, which we've hired this year, which is really interesting because girls can go in and they can uh, see shows on a really 360 degree kind of scale, which is really going to be interesting. And I hope that everyone's going to enjoy it and they have a fun time and they get ex inspired. On Sunday, we were blessed to have been addressed by Hazrat Khalifa al Masih V, may Allah be his helper, from Islamabad. So returning to the risks of television, the internet, and social media that I mentioned earlier, if you wish to save your, yourselves and your families from their negative effects, you must act with wisdom. View content that increases your knowledge and understanding of the world and Allah's creation. When you have free time, you can watch lighter content or comedies, but choose those programs that are decent. Alhamdulillah, this has been the end of an amazing and successful ishtima. We have all benefited so much from the programs and activities to help us learn more about our faith. Shakiba, what was your favourite part? Best of all was, of course, our beloved Hazrul's address. Inshallah, we hope to see you all again next year. From us here at Better for Two, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. That's all for today. Keep sending us your feedback on our social media or email us on roundup at mta.tv. We're waiting to hear your story ideas and getting your video comments for our next episode. Tune in next week for much more from our studios around the globe. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum.